I'm really blessed <coughs> to have been able to give that opportunity because you were the one thing about you were very open minded. Because some people look down on the music, they look down on drum and bass as being this thing. No, totally, like, no, this absolutely, is funky man, this is wicked, you know. Yeah. And I think that was what was lovely about it. And I, I you know, I even found we found two days ago, yeah, the, the 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 instrumental version. It was the dub version of Chemistry that was made so that Dan I could write the vocal to it so that Dan could lay wow. it down, and it's so raw. You know, it's polished. Wow. It's like later, but it's but it's you know, it's got so much headroom on the dat. Yeah. Because yeah, back yeah. then you never pro over process stuff, and so it sounds Fantastic. amazing. I've been finding all these beautiful nuggets. I mean, the same happened with Justina. You know, Justina would sit and play the chords, which were the chords for Bowie, which was truth. You know, and I'm like, they love this airy sound. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yamaha's, yeah. which is really lovely. It's got that airy sound. Yeah. The idea of what I think electronic people do. Is I've always found, like, even when we did some stuff that we, which I still, I've still got in the folder, by the way, I've got this raw stuff from Subjective. That I'm going to go. It's there, Robin. It's right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, loop this three times here. Take it, extract yeah. it, loop it here for one twenty, and we go back <laughs> to the multi here. So that, so the idea of what that gift is for me, arrangement, I think, is the thing for me. It's yeah. that arrangement. Without a shadow of a doubt, give me arrangement over anything, and you give me four sounds. Go right. I'm going to arrange this the best I can. Yeah. I've, always I've always felt that the complexity of the music, I love that. Bring it on. I can just layer it. You know, yeah. Mother was the beast of doing that without going into Mother. But of course, as a coming of age album, I think my argument with people was, you know, you don't think it's good enough. Here's 21 minutes of timeless. That's that's good enough. Because <laughs> as, as, yeah. a shape, as, as a shape, as a shape, yeah. as something which is storytelling, the raconteur envisioned to go through it, to, to create this thing, to move through that. Yeah. And all the way, and then when you come back to the end of that storm with Diane opening up to this other thing, and that, that was galvanized through the crucible, which was set from a yeah. chemistry, you know, doing a little EP for five minutes and four and a half. It's okay, we're in the zone here with arrangement. So, so, but it was when, when committing you was a different powerhouse of this guy's class, he's playing this, his class. We, we're gonna be not, we're not gonna see this dirty anymore. You know, and, 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 and you think about when I listen to it, even then as avant-garde as it was, yeah. I listened to the original last night. And it's just because it's like 150 BPM. It's like no, it is totally, it's like normal yeah, it's music in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was bastardized back then. They they almost <laughs> if it wasn't for the fact that it was technology that it was new and the way that we recorded drums and programmed drums. He would have probably got the same slate in that you know the journeyman what got because he's like well it's not innovative enough or but but it's challenging the idea of of of, of how song structures are and and, yeah. and i think coming from that place like you said of the bygone era of great songs yeah you know i don't have to you know it was the idea of me not having to sample anymore because you know i'd been sampling for so many years and it was the yeah. idea of the penis yourself get the get the keyboard yourself you're gonna get that thing that makes mentalism hire it in <laughs> what keyboard was it on and I remember getting <laughs> keyboards that played like electronic synths that were like, you know, that played Mentas, like the, you know, the, the Roland and the, and, the, and, the, and the Korg and the Moog and all these keyboards. But as soon as you played the preset, oh, I found it. It was too clean. Yeah, no, totally. Just way too clean. And you're like, yeah, no, totally because cool. we've been sampling three or four records that have been de de degenerated. Yeah, when, yeah, you yeah, had, totally. when you had that kind of beauty and the beast to what you were doing and what this was, that's what I think is beautiful. Because it's instant, you see, it's, it's not it's not preconceived. It comes out from wherever it comes from, straight to it, and that's the beauty. And that's the beauty of, of the of timeless album, that mm. raw creativity that's just been nurtured and placed in its right places and places where you wouldn't expect it to be. That's the beauty of it. Mm. That's a, that's a true well, true art. Ironically, in in terms of it being, you know, as you say, this true art form. It, it, it's, it did set the bar. I knew I would get crucified for, for Mother. I, I get that part of it. But hey, that Barry made low. You know what I mean? I get it. You know what I mean? You, you get, you, I have to do what I have to do as an artist. I can't, you know, like I said, a truthful idea lasts for the honesty of time. And I'll live, I'll swear by it. There's nothing I regret about Mother and the album like imploding on drugs and hallucinogenics. I've got no problem with that because I had that lamenting. You know, what was ironic about Peter Minuri, meeting Peter Minuri when he was the head of classical, was the idea that. I didn't know that, you know, when I knew that I had this thing that I was going to make mother and it was because I can see my mother. And I knew what was going to happen. And I knew the idea and the shape was going to, it's going to have to be an hour because time is 21 minutes. It just has to be. 
um, yeah. and it has to be like an opera, and I'm going to get completely crucified for it. But the the idea of Peter Minuri, when I when I did that the, the conducting thing, which by the way anyone can conduct, it's not rocket yeah. science. If it's four to the floor, it's basically you're doing that. That's it. When you start the <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean, the intricacy of it, you know what I mean. But the giving people what no, I know what you mean. Yeah, in the music, you know what I mean. When you start looking at scores, you can read, you can see where oh, there's the tops, so there's the mids, and there's the bases at the bottom. Okay, I'll just do everything. You know what I mean. So I had to really quickly adjust. But the idea of when Peter <laughs> Minuri gave me the DVD and said, "This is your favourite piece." It's Gorecki, you know, uh, it three, is, uh, sorrowful songs. Simply number three, yeah. Simply number three, which gets me every time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and of course, it was the basis of Mother. If yeah. You listen to Mother now, and you go, "Oh, I can see, I can, I can see the art." Yeah. But when you think about that, obviously, obviously, Bjork introduced me to that side of that music, and it was very sad, yeah. very moody. But of course, yeah. you know, there were no, there were words in in Polish I didn't understand. But of course, it inspired me to make Mother, and then I realised that when I got the DVD and saw Dawn, I think Dawn Upshaw doing it. And it was subtitled. Right. It was about the mother. It said the mother lamenting, and I've lost her. And it was about out losing her in Auschwitz. It was like, oh my god, how can music vicariously go through you yeah. and give you these feelings that are about lamenting? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Where somebody else got sounds, like, <laughs> sounds like pots and pans to me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but, back, but back to timeless. It was the. It was for me. The classicist impressionism, if you like, it's not classic. No, totally, without it's the, doubt. The classicist impressionism of what timeless as a movement was. Yeah, when, yeah. When you, because I haven't seen you, do you remember when you heard it for the first the, for twenty one minutes? Do you remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, the first time I was li listening to it, I was going, "That sounds like me." <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, it was really. I mean, because amazing, it was amazing because. It was a really new thing. I mean, it was a new thing for everybody, and that's the beauty of it. So you kind of, I think on first listening, it was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And once you started wrapping yourself inside it, you got really into the mu the, the layers, the musicality. You heard, and it's yeah, fun. but you also heard lots of other stuff going on with it. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, no, totally. And the way it's all morphed together, it's really clever. It moved. So, yeah. so when, when was that? When did, you, when did you, was it in L.A.? Was it? No, it was when I came back to London. I, I, I didn't, uh, um, oh my God, well, so it's was probably a, a year and a half after its release. Wow. Yeah, wow. I'm still waiting for the go for the disc, by the way. Did you see that one behind you? <laughs> you can have my one, mate. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the address. <laughs> I'll send you mine. But, oh, okay. Uh, I hope no, no, it was amazing. And it was, I mean, but over the years, it's something, you know, it's one of those things over the years that it's, you do certain projects that you kind of go, oh yeah, I did that, you know, and that's that's it. But you know, the timeless album, I'm just so proud because it's it's uh it's so it's, it's it doesn't age for one thing. It can't age because it doesn't have a it doesn't have a foothold, and therefore it can it just shift shapes through through time, and that's that's the beauty of it. I mean, um, uh, no, I'm very proud of it. Very proud. Well, I think that. We're hoping that we're going to work together and I always felt that when we did South Bank we really did it justice I mean the Heritage Boys know what they're doing and we really yeah, absolutely. Did we did it justice and Jules was on point that first two shows we did that year it was a very proud moment yeah. just cause, because oh, the, the alchemy just unravels and you see realize and then you get you get in with the drummers I've got Bleas and Bets and you get in with them and you're and you know Jules is dealing with them boys and the girls <laughs> and I'm dealing with the drummers you know, oh. and, and there's, a, there's another dynamic. It was almost like a double conducting thing going on where I'm with the drummer yeah. and, it's, and it moved the end. Because I, I think what happened was I would kind of walked on at the kind of mid timeless. They were left to perform it and I just went straight yeah. into the drummers. And, it, and, and, and I think Jules said, or Matt Calver said, you need to get on and just do that with the drummers because <laughs> the energy, you know, and I guess like any conductor, if someone loves you, they'll cool. play, play better for you. And I think yeah, the idea of having this hybrid, you know what I mean? You've got the conductor keeping oh. the overall shape and you've got the drummer. Give me yeah. the drummers. Give me the drummers. And, so oh, that's like playing percussion and, and getting involved with the percussion and getting, and it was, it's just sitting, you know, sitting there with your shakers yeah, and licking around you, all these people. I'm thinking, I said to Sally, I said to Sally Green the other, we did, when we did Ronnie Scott's and it was like, we did four shows back to back. And I'm sitting yeah. there, we do Journeyman and Timeless, a mixed bag. And I said, Sally, 
I've got to be the only person to be on Ronnie on the on the old Ronnie Scott stage and can't play an instrument. <laughs> yeah, oh, you, drinks are finished now, please. Could you please go to the bar and could they please move the car outside? And someone's gonna get a parking ticket. So yeah, it, it just it just seemed really strange that the that the Al I think the the other thing the the other upside of that yeah. is even when doing stuff with a guy called, guy called Chris Mayo. If you've come across this guy, yeah. and he's a classical composer, and he's got hundreds of compositions. I mean, he's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and we were doing this classic goldie program and it was two episodes and it was you know i was sitting with anna and whatever her name is doing a bit of anna, uh, doing some classical stuff and and it's all about yeah. chords. and i'm like yeah but you can play chords but it's the different type of chords and what notes are in the chord and what makes up the chord yeah, totally. and it was this whole thing that i was kind of getting frustrated with about you know because i had to do this you know he's got two weeks to put this together and it was it was all hammed up narrative of how oh, he got don't, two weeks don't. to put this together and I'm like, you know, and I remember, I always remember, I remember one of the, one of the first, the first violin, the, the head of violins, or it was Roger Wright or one of, one of Roger Wright's people. Yeah, yeah. It was the head of, yeah. it wasn't Roger Wright. I love, I actually like Roger Wright, but it was one of Roger Wright's henchmen for the concert. Yeah. So the head of the concert, because he went, you know, I think when I hear the piece, the 12 minute piece of evolution, the Albert Hall that was conducted there, that when Goldie's composition, I felt that there was a bigger piece waiting to get out. It's called "Give Me the Fucking Budget, You Swat." <laughs> That's what it is? Do you know what I mean? It's like yes. you know, it's like ugh. It's almost cringeworthy because it's a great piece and it's twelve minutes and he ran out of money to do it and that's what it is. But uh, it gave me an idea of seeing someone conducting a piece that you composed, which, which I never experienced. Absolutely not. It's amazing, amazing. Um, and I really feel that I still feel that you should have a crack at conducting time this at one point i'd love to um uh, well you know you know you know it'd I mean, be amazing I'm... especially in this day and age uh because technology well techno technology has moved on but technology in the live format where well, you see, combine it and also when you think about the combination with what jules barley and bugley have put towards keeping a tight ship with the with the players yeah. great players and the drums which i married which which i think was very unique i'd got that together in a you know, getting those two to play all of those beats, and, and Matt Calvert, who's an absolute him and his brother. I mean, uh, I mean, they're, 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 I mean, it's, it's off his head. He's a genius. He's just, I mean, this guy. You know, he was like, I haven't got the dap with his sound. He goes, well, so I'll design the sound. I'm like, you'll go away. Yeah, yeah, you'll make your sound design the sound. You know, can play anything. And he's, you know, when we did. Are oh, you going with me? He was like, just you know, I want harmonics. And I was like, you know, just these harmonics will move and slowly move with the piece. You know, of course. And he was mad because they grew up in university music school, listening to Pat Metheny and be like doing cover versions. And I'm like, uh, I'm uh, working with Pat on this track. What do you mean, Pat? I'm like, yeah, Pat. On the, Pat wants to do. Are you going with me? Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's do that then. So no, that, was a real, that was a amazing. real, a real thing. But I yeah. let's bring it back to time. I was going to edit through a little few pieces of this, yeah. but I want to touch on the fact that you taught me a lot about that MIDI information and where I placed it and what I could do with it. Yeah. How the juxtaposed to what was going on with all of this technical music and Rob was a genius technically. And I'd yeah, drive him out in his ear like King Lear. I'd be in the, in the ear going, we need to take this, six bar, take this back, go stick down, flip with the reverse yeah. loop in there. And putting all of these things that were... And he was like, well, let's just slow down. How are we going to do this? And of course, the piece on the album was kind of got the most, hmm, okay. But now when you listen to it, you think, bloody hell, Sea of Tears. Absolutely. Because it was the only track on the album that had Mel Gaynor, live drums. Oh, Mel, brilliant. And everything else had drums that were sold, that were played, it was sold that we had, and we only sold yeah. back to mainly Paris, you know, assembly line, you know, the yeah. classics that we were working with. But when I looked at what those that well, I was going into these scratch sessions, which I'd learned through Howie, you know, you go and you get a player, yeah. you go in and you start singing to them and laying it down and <laughs> getting the best out of it. And I think that's what I do. Get it out, you know, <laughs> and sit there and pull it out of them and go, right, it's no, no, totally, totally. Um, and I felt that the the idea of of sea of tears because it's a, it's another like it's 13 12 13 minutes long it's still a long track compared to you yeah. know modern day music but i felt it was it was unique and it's it's got a couple of stories simultaneous having to come back to england my son's voice is in the center of what are we doing here washing away the tears he's now got double life in prison you know the double life in prison there's all of these weird oh. things that happen with that track and being in miami recording the sea 
and having to come back to England. So it really is the story of my life. Yeah, yeah, amazing. But, and some albums are just that. There will never be yeah. another like it. No. Um, and of course it did open the door and, and I'm glad for it, for, you know, for other people to make albums that were, on, were yeah. genre related to drum and bass music. And it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't just throwaway. And I really hope that we can, you know, I think we've done a few tinkles on Mirror. You know, we're, we're tinkling away with, a, you know, the, the Nana track, which I sent you, which you loved. Yeah. Which was no, I, I, and... I just love it because it's, you know, it's, it's an opportunity to, well, I'll tell you, look, I'm, you've got to put this in because this is, this is such an, so my main memory of this whole period of where Timeless and a lot of my playing came from this one afternoon and on, and there's not many afternoons I remember. This is a Sunday afternoon. Now, this is a time when I used to get a phone call from usually from Howie or John, his manager, John Noel, you remember John, saying, oh man, you know, can you come down to the studio? We just want you to play on some stuff. And I used to do that a lot. And I used to bump into you a lot. And I knew not much about you. And we, you'd always be sat there and we playing. And I'd go in the studio and play and everybody come and go, man, that's wonderful. And I'll never forget, it may have been Mayfair. And I could see the windows now, and you, you were there, and I think Darkus was there because Darkus at that day, I don't think he was even barely. He was like doing um, big boy, <laughs> A and R at London, wasn't he? he just only a few in an hairdresser. He was to Ireland for a little while. I mean, he went back there. That's right. Like, yeah, but he was nothing. He was just like, but he wasn't not nothing. He was a really he's like everything was really wow. That's amazing, man. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, look, so I had, this is about music. I'm going to go back to my thing about preconceived. So you were there, and I was going, man, that's really beautiful. I don't know how you do that. That's really fantastic. Now, I'm from a school of not dance, so I'm classical, funk, da-da-da-da. One of my favourite <laughs> I'm sat there talking to you, and I go, well, my favourite album is uh, by a guy called Michael Franks. And you went, not passion fruit. And I went... It, and uh, I said, Passion Fruit's my most favourite album. And I suddenly I went, Goldie, <laughs> I'm here. I'm, I'm here. Everybody's doped out of their trolleys. Yeah. Goldie just started talking about Michael Franks. I'm thinking, what happened there then? It's like my world went, vroom. Yeah. No, no, this is really serious, actually, because I wasn't coming from a point of going, well, it doesn't really matter. I'll explain the old shit to you because you don't know much. You know, or, you know, I'll just do what I'm going to do and you'll be impressed. I knew that you knew Michael Franks, and I thought this guy is totally into music. This is really so. It, that's why the respect's there, man. That's that's a well, true I mean, story. I mean, when I look at you see, that's why still life's called still life, and this is why this is important because still life talking was Pat Metheny's album. Yeah, yeah. And 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 and, and, and Michael Franks tuned it was the the uh, the watercolors of laughter oh oh in rapture. The moment is captured. You know, that, I mean, there's the feels for them. I mean, all, because he says, there they are, it, as he asks, in still life. So yeah, totally. still life was, was, was a homage to both Michael and Pat. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's when, amazing. When you look at still life as a track, it goes, because obviously from whichever perspective anyone's looking at this, I guess it yeah. would be in reverse. It's got this, this, it goes, oh, totally, you know? totally. it's like, it's like the mirror of looking at a painting and it stops and you stay with the yeah. painting for a while and then it flips the painting over again and then it moves yeah. and it goes through all of the, oh, the ways of building mind. the arrangement of a painting because yeah. it's still life. And then it the is. idea of Matheny of how it's this Latin, Latin thing at the back, which is also yeah. influenced by Bug in the Bass been played at 45, which is a 33 track by God Craig. So wow. the idea of having a trilogy of influence, there was a very amazing. important trilogy of influence on that. Oh, track. that was amazing! Yes, yeah, um, was that, and I think respect to where it's due. I, you know, you played well, and you played well for me. But I was not going to lay down easy on just any old shit because I think that the idea of going, "What? Stop there! Oh, that's great! Oh, yeah. that sounds amazing!" No, no, no. But I also remember <laughs> with you and me where it moves into the one of the notes that you had played on I mean, that chord and we took the yeah. chord and i said to rob the sax we've got a we've got a bass on that it's a bit like the motif the motif yeah. there 
Now, yeah. look at what Pat does. Move the motif. And, and I guess that's what the influence was, but it wouldn't have happened without that beautiful afternoon. And, and no, I'm that's right. remembering now, oh, God, it yeah. wasn't two days. It was just a sunny afternoon. Just, no, it was, a, it was a magic. It's like, a, uh, like something that happened. It was amazing. Great. Like a real yeah. energy. I'll, ne I'll never get to ask to do that. I'm, I'll do it to myself. In fact, you're the, per the only person who ever asked me to do it. I love, I, gets... Like I said, I love... You know, with this new material that I, you know, that me and James have done and playing, mm. you know, just been able to see what your take on it is and the idea of going, you know, and be able, and now, you know, before I was so shy about voice memos, I've been all over that for years, you know, Robin, it's something like this. <laughs> <laughs> something like, I mean, I think you, uh, the beauty, you know, with, uh, with, with John Dixon, you know, and John's. Yeah, but, but just seeing you play. I could just do that for hours, man. The amount of songs you've written, you've written some amazing songs. And you've probably written some amazing albums. Yeah. Thomas is the only song in it. It's in its own little world, which I like. It is. It's, in her own world. It's, 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 and it still is. You know, it's amazing that I walk on my journey through life, the classical world, the crossover world, da, 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 da. Wherever you go, I, I will always find a person who, if you mention Timeless or mention your name or whatever, they they, have, they come over with a warm fuzzy feeling. It's, it's either hero worship or the worship of that album. It's extraordinary. Well, they go, I hate that guy. He's, he, he, he's, he's such a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> man, it's a pleasure, man. Um, I'm so made up. I really am. And I, and I felt that from anyone out there, my advice to you with making music is find beautiful players man that are around you and sit with mm. them and share the writing and get involved and get and you know if you're going to be a unit and try and work with them and if you're going to be session fee you may pay them what they want to do whatever they got to do yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know session fee is session fee but what you got to do is if you're going to get involved and you can write and you've got great songwriters and people that can play get involved with them because we, we're so good at looking at the computer in just this thing yeah, and yeah, that totally. is not what it is it, this no, is not the interface for making stuff happen a lot quicker. Yes, no, that's exactly it. That's all it is. And that's it, you know. Yeah. And, and, I, and I and I challenge that when I say to people, okay, you go, yeah, but you you didn't engineer timeless. Rob played with engineer, and you didn't play. And you certainly know you didn't play. You didn't play anything. Okay, here's, <laughs> 20, here's twenty-one minutes. There's Ableton pictures. Your weapon, Ableton Logic. <laughs> right, I'll see you in. Um, let's get. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give you. I'll give you, oh, I'll give you a whole month on oh, timeless, just to see. Oh, it's not a year. And no, you can no, no, I'll never get it. Maybe see what you can come up with in 21 minutes. And that's the bottom line. It's just science, social change, beautiful play people, beautiful instrumentation. You know, yeah. vo Diane's vocal. Let's go. That's one thing we haven't touched. Oh no, amazing. Diane's, God rest her soul. Diane's contribution to that album. Which is credit duly noted because her yeah. voice, still to this day, you know, you can't. It's untouchable. No, no it's, it's amazing. You it's know. Amazing. Was it was it Diane who used to do the vocals with with Howie and Dobie as well? Yes. It was that sort of, cause, you know, because what I, I left. I was, remember, she did Candy Mountain. It all went a little bit south. Yeah, no, she, she was and, amazing. And, and then of course, she was just a nice, quite unassuming lady, wasn't she? She was just. Yeah, I mean, it was. I, I was talking to. I was talking to my friend about, you know, when Diane passed. Yeah, she was in the hospice, and I went to visit her. And she, um, she was on her way out, and, and she was in a bad way, and she could just crack a spot, could hardly speak. She had a chalkboard next to her. And I massaged the feet and, 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 and held a hand on the first day. And we hadn't seen each other for years. You know, and I'm like, you know, we did it, didn't we, Dan? We really were a fucking beauty. We did something that was really amazing. And I'm thankful yeah. for that. And I'm not spoke to him. He was always worrying about, you know, you, you didn't give me enough on the tour. And he went on the tour and it was all of this stuff. And in the end, you've got to make peace. And I said, look, you know, I'm here. And yeah. we, we, we laughed a little. And we cried a little, a lot. And the next day I came down there and with my iPad, they'd just come out of the time. Yeah. And I always remember, 
I said, Dan, I've got to play you this thing. I've something really beautiful for you. And it was Giles Peterson months earlier had sent me yeah. the Mateus Voigt lounge version of yes. Inner City Life. Sang wow. by Jaleesa Anderson. And I bet you've wow. not even heard it. No. And when I heard it, I was going through a really bad divorce. I was in a bad way. I was doing way too much drugs. And I remember hearing it and, and playing it in the early hours of the morning and just breaking down. And I always kept it as this thing because all of the remixes that people had done was like, it's okay, it's all right, it's, it's not timeless. It's just, it's a record company and it's great and it's all my friends and it's, you know, all this stuff. And I get it and it was great and it was all right. Yeah. I'd never heard a version that had flawed me. Wow. And, it sat, and he'd never heard a version that flawed me. And I listened to this version. He says, you've got to hear this, Goldie. So I, I called him up as soon as I'd heard it. I went, mate, I've got like, <laughs> tears streaming down my face. Just, who is the singer when it's Jaleesa Anderson? You know, I went, no, I know the mom because it's from, you know, Carol Anderson, right? I mean, a really famous family. He's, the mother, the daughter, the two sisters and the mother are really famous singers. Carly yeah. Anderson. Jaleesa Anderson, Carly Nelson's the mom, Jaleesa Anderson's the daughter, or, or both wow. sisters, look them up. But anyway, I called her up and I was, where is she? She goes, well, she's in, I he said, well, who did it? And we're no, um, who, no, I, I said to I was going to hear it. And he said, who's done it? He goes, this guy from Germany, Matthias Voigt. So right. I said, his number, and I saw, I called him up in Berlin. I don't know, the Matthias Voigt, I mean, yeah, it's gone. I said, I love this cover version, you know, it's amazing. The singer's incredible, and yeah, it's uh, Jaleesa Anderson. I said, do you have a number? And he went, yes, I can give you a number. She's back in New Orleans. So I called her in New Orleans. And I thought, I'll, I'll, I'll get the next day, wait till the next day. You know, yeah. Time zone. I call her up and I go, uh, um, can I speak to Miss Anderson, please? I went, yes, who is it? This is Goldie. I went, Goldie, how are you, man? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm calling. Do you know me? She went, you don't remember me? She went, let me tell you. I said, well, I've just heard this in a City Life version. It's just had me in bits. And she went, I had to do it. You know why? I went, no. She went, because Diane beat me to it. I did the demos and I tried to do something. And I, oh I, my God. I, was, I was in line to do it and Diane beat me to it. Oh and rightly God. so. So she'd, be, she'd beaten. That's an amazing story. That's ridiculous. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't have made it up. Um, oh my God. The she said, because Diane beat me to it and the record had all these singers floating around and Diane when she did it, it was like, you know, I was really angry at the time because I didn't get to do it. So I had yeah. to do a version of it. And it was the irony of that, it was like, oh my God. So yeah, that was what, yeah, of course, we thought we're, we're, we're going to put it on this special pack. You know, the, yeah, yeah. it's going out in December. I remember Trenton calling me up and saying, no, Barry called me up. This is off the record, by the way, guys, whoever's watching this. I was outside Black Market Records. This was going to make sense to you. Yeah. Barry called me and says, Goldie, have you got a minute? Oh yeah, he goes, listen. Even if you write something, you lay it down and you write and you write all the words for it. When the artist contributes to something, always give them a little something. Yeah. And I went, what, I, what's this about, Dave? He went, you know what to do. I put the phone down. I called Trent. I says, I've had David on the phone. Did you not give anybody? He says, well, no, because you wrote the song. You wrote all of it. Trent went, well, give it. I went, wait, give him something, mate. <laughs> Because wow. even though I wrote truth word for word, melody for melody, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's what yeah. he added to it as a fucking. No, it's, it's, it's and then yeah. we had the same thing with Diane. You know, Diane, listen, she wrote Timeless with me, but I wrote all of it and she added yeah. some stuff with it and she's writing. She's a writer. Same as Rob. You wrote, but you wrote it. It's good. It's fine. Yeah, no. so we wrote yeah. it. And, and also, you know, that's what it's about. But I felt I that was do. like a management thing that you're like, hang on a minute. <laughs> you know, and of, of course, I thought that conversation in studio that you were, you had a piece, you had a session, you were a session, it was a session thing, but you still should have got a disc. Yeah, and, no, but I, yeah, I should have got a disc, but it's, it's made my life far more entertaining. The fact I haven't, and I'll get one now. You see, it's a completeness. It's a final cycle. It's circle for twenty five years. <laughs> finally, get the disc. And then I get a lawsuit. It's gonna be brilliant. <laughs> oh man, it's fantastic to speak to you. I love you. I love you very much, mate. And you, man.